Hello, today I want to have a look at how I put this card together. It's using the Couture Creations Butterfly Garden papers and their bracket frame cut foil and embossed die set. So the dies I've used are these ones here and you can see there's lots of dies in the set. This the piece of card I've got behind them is an A5 piece of card which is 14.9 by 21 and as you can see um, the, the largest of these dies would fit nicely on that size with space for a sentiment Turn it that way with space for a sentiment underneath if you wanted to make a card in, in that way okay so so that's the, the cut volume boss dies I'm using, the, the bracket frames. They're part of the Modern Essentials collection. And from the Butterfly Garden, I'm also going to be using that die there. And that's what I've used to add this decoration in at the top, the, the honeycomb, and then I've cut some of the hexagons that should be the base back in. Okay. And the, the butterfly I used it is from an older collection. Um, I think it was from the Ula La collection and it, it came with a frame. But it, it's a beautiful butterfly and just need, it was what I needed to finish off this card. But I want to, in the video, look at the, the foiling elements and, uh, and the beautiful papers. So let me just get my Go Press set up. And then we can look at the papers while it's heating up. So I've had my Go Press and foil on already so this is hot but then to actually work with the cut foil and embossed dies sorry that's my black card um, I also need I prefer to use a thin metal shim um, I find if I use the conversion plate I get I get too much pressure with these so a thin metal shim and I actually put it says two on here but it's actually I'm only using one piece of 300 GSM card underneath. 300 GSM is what I use for making card bases. Um, so that, that's, you know, normal die cutting card is 200 to 250 GSM. 300 is that bit thicker and normally used for card bases. So I've just put that on there. Let me just tilt the camera down a little. I've just put my piece of card on there and then I'm putting my, my thin metal shim over the top. And depending on your die cutting machine, you might need an extra metal shim or an extra layer of card there or not need the card at all, just one metal shim. So that's going on there because the metal plate needs to warm up. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to show you the papers. So I'm just going to move the camera. Okay, so the Butterfly Garden Collection, you, you can get these papers as a, a 12 by 12 paper pad and there's also a 6 by 6 paper pad with smaller versions. Um, but I've actually got the, the packs of, of them, so I, I've got five sheets of each in a pack. And for the card, if we look at the card, this is the sheet I've used. So you can see I've, I've picked out that section there for my background and then the various panels are cut from the bits that are left over from down the bottom here and along here and then i've got this piece and this piece left over but very little waste okay so it's a good economical use of a 12 by 12 sheet so that's one of the papers just move those out of the way before i bury them so that's that one and then on the back you've got these these lovely kind of muted backgrounds on, on a lot of them in the various shades that coordinate so that's one that's another and the back of it this is one of my favorites i haven't made a card with it yet it's like it, it, it's almost too special to use it's one of those papers uh, but I will be making a card with it in the next few weeks. So, another one. And I'm sure in, in the 
paper pad you get two of each so if you want to use the back of one and the front of it, front of one you've got you can use it one one way and one the other another one with stripes on the back of that one smaller flowers on that one and more kind of script and letter bits on the back and more kind of extracts from letters and things and pink background this time lots of butterflies and flowers and purple kind of um, pattern on the back there just very subtle and that same pattern that was on the back of that paper is the background in here this beautiful design you've got these borders there's so many bits of these papers you think oh I could do this and I could do that uh, right, I've got some bits in here from another card I made bits that are left over so that's another one of the sheets and all those beautiful bits on the back and I've still got half a sheet of that and half a sheet of that left and then this one you might recognize this from a card I made a few weeks ago smaller flowers and it's got kind of the script in the background and a, another kind of uh, tartan background in the coordinating colours great for a masculine card more butterflies and purple kind of stripe pattern on the back so so many possibilities in that collection it's difficult to know where to start put those to one side okay so now let's talk about foiling now these are thick papers they're not card um, and then I've used some black card to create um, a matte layer but that's also foiled um, so because I'm putting my matte layer down on black card um, I don't necessarily need a lot of support for it um, but so yes this but because these are papers when I'm foiling them to this edge I do actually want some extra support behind that so I'm going to need some bits of card that I may or may not end up using with these um, but I do need to use it while I'm foiling so I always keep some odds and ends of card to use got some here actually that's a prime example it's actually some card I bought for boiling onto um, and it doesn't take foil evenly it comes out patchy every time no matter what I do you get card like that you think it's great smooth card nice card but no it just doesn't work uh, so if I want a, a backing that is basically um, never going to be seen that's ideal card to use so let me see what sizes I want. So if I'm going to, let me do that. I'm going to do the bigger size. Um, and I'm going to use this piece that I had left over. And I'm going to create another panel in that size. Okay. So first thing I need to do, kind of cut this down to size a bit. Um, and make sure I've got the right die for the right size piece. So is it, let me just check. Is it that one or is that the mat? Now that's the matte layer, so it's the next one down. Okay, so it's that one. Okay, so let me leave those two out because I'm going to need them both and put the rest of these out the way. And to, to cut these to size, I'm going to use my Couture Creations um, mini guillotine. So let me just grab that. This is a, a lovely piece of equipment. Let me turn it up the right way so you can see it the right way up. It's got a lovely 
clear measuring guide in centimetres and inches along the top here with a nice firm edge to put your card against. Okay, I'm going to have to turn it the other way up to use it because otherwise I'm trying to use it left handed. Okay, so you'll be looking at it up. Sort of, this is the top. This is the top? Yeah, it's going to be upside down to you, I think. Um, if I can do it that way, that'll be better. That's the top. Okay, so let's just get this is the die I'm going to use. Let me just check what size. Now, here's the thing when you're using paper like this, it's always a good idea to make sure you're going to end up your text still going in the right direction. The sideways text looks strange. Yes. So this is let me make sure I've got a piece of this big enough. Just the right size, so I'm not wasting too much. How wide is this? That's quite wide. size and then I want to cut a piece of that to about the same size. That's just that in. The only thing, when I'm using this do make sure you've lifted the blade all the way up when you're putting your card in otherwise you can find it's not straight. There we are. So self-sharpening blade on these. As I say a lovely clear measuring guide. Um, cuts a beautiful edge every time. Okay, so I've got my die and my paper. I need some foil. So I like to use my paper or card to measure my foil. So I'm just going to open up my foil, put that on there, and I can kind of fold that back, and I end up with a faint crease line where I need to cut. Creations um, gloss gold foil, it's a beautiful colour. Okay, for the next bit, I like to cut out the middle of my foil. And that's so that I don't get over foiling in the middle. And to do that, I lay my die and my foil. I've got a um, self-healing cutting mat that I only use for doing this. It's just a cheap one um, and you can just lay on some, some paper instead or make really sure your craft mat is, is, is very clean and free from any contaminants. Um, keeping my craft mat clean is a bigger challenge, quite a big challenge. So I like to, I was laying some paper down um, but the paper ends up with cuts in it and you're wasting paper. And I, I saw these um, self healing mats being sold quite cheaply. So I thought, ah, oh, a separate one that I use for doing, actually cutting paper on 
would be just the same because I'm only using light pressure with this. I don't really cut into the mat. You do kind of get a line left behind, but it's just kind of the pressure of the blade transferring the foil on, onto the, the mat. It doesn't really cut into it. So I've just gone round the outside. I particularly like to take the corners off because I'm going to want to tape this down in a minute. And it gives me somewhere to put my tape. I'm just going to take that excess off the top as well. Okay, and then around the inside, I just want to be um, maybe a quarter of an inch from the edge, roughly. Don't have to follow the contour exactly, just roughly. And just use the, the die to hold the foil down. If you really don't like using a craft knife, you could draw around the inside with an alcohol marker and then gently fold it in half at the centre of the foil and then that would let you make a snip with some scissors and then you could cut the middle out using scissors but again you want, you don't want to go right to, right to the edge of where you've drawn around you want to make sure you're going to have about a quarter of an inch border or draw around a quarter of an inch from, from the edge of the die put my craft knife safely away. I've got one with a comes with a lid so I always put the lid on it as soon as I stop using it because they, they are quite dangerous things. Just teasing this away. No, it's not cut there. I'm going to turn it around so I can get a better angle to cut it. It's exactly where I need to cut it. That's it. If you get problems with your blade dragging your foil, then you probably need a sharper blade and to replace the blade in your um, craft knife. Okay, so piece of my paper. I'm going to put that on there, and I'm going to put that down there. And let me just show you this close up if I can get the camera to focus on it. You got do that. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus on it. If I do that. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. That's better, okay. So you can see this die, it's got a cutting edge around the outside and then a ridge further in and that's the, that ridge is what does the foiling. Okay, so it's just a, an open die with that detail in it. Okay, so I want to put the cutting edge down on the foil. So that goes down there. You know the camera's not going to focus on that. It's better. I've got some low tack decorators masking tape. I actually use frog um, decorators masking tape for delicate surfaces. Frog is the brand. Um, Glue 3M do a similar kind of professional decorators product. Um, say it's professional decorators makes it sound expensive, but because they use it in big quantities, it's, it's not really. Okay, so I've taped that down. 
I also want to put my piece of card, an extra piece of card behind it, and that's to make sure that that uh, embossed line that actually transfer the foil doesn't cut through the paper. Okay, so that needs to go onto the go press. Um, move this out of the way. There we are. So I've just slid this off the base. It's been happily getting nice and warm. So I need to put this down just like that. Have I done that right? No, wrong way up. That way up. So that the die, metal of the die, is against the heated surface. And then close the lid. Okay, now using these does leave scratches in the lid. And that's why you can get replacement lids. So when they get very, very scratched, very, very scratched, um, and very bent, like your cutting plates do in your die cutting machine, you can re replace the lid on your go press. Move that out of the way. That would just take a moment to warm up. While I'm waiting, I can get ready to do the, the mat layer for the back. Let me get some card. Now that says it's warm, but I don't really believe it. So I'll get some more foil. There we go. I'll use a piece of card just to measure the size I need. Again, I'm going to do exactly the same with this piece. Get it ready while that one's warming up. side it's roughly following the shape of the inside of the die so it's about a quarter inch gap so I don't want to make it too hard to line up my die on the foil if you cut it exactly you could very easily find you hadn't got the die and the foil lined up and end up with an area not not foiled because there just wasn't any foil there underneath the the cut and foil die. Okay, so that's pretty much done. The go press has had time to warm up now, so I'm just going to put this to one side while I run it through. So I'll just grab the die cutting machine. There we are. Let me just put the camera up a little. Oops, too far. That'll do. Okay, so let's take I'll take the go press off the base and I'm just going to wind it through. Just hit some resistance as I get to the die, but not a huge amount. I can still just keep turning the handle smoothly. Okay, let's 
see what we've got. So I can see immediately that it has cut through that back layer of card, which is what I wanted. Put that there. This can go back on the go press to stay warm. Okay, let's bring this over. So this piece just lifts off. And that comes out, a little bit of card on there. Okay. Now, the foil and the die are stuck together, so I can take the foil off. I will reuse the pieces of tape. So as tape I use, you just saw how cleanly it peeled, off, peeled away. It very rarely damages any card or paper. I won't say never, but very rarely. Okay, let's lift this off. Okay, so that's foiled. Okay, there's a little bit of overfoiling on the very edges. I can get the camera to focus on it. Let me. There we go. There's some overfoiling there. Now, some people might like that look, but it's not consistent all the way around. Oh, I want a clean look, so I'm going to take that off using a sand eraser. Now, I've got two. I've got this one, which is made by Ton. Let's get the camera to focus. I've got this one, which is made by Tonbow, and it's got a very coarse end and a finer end. Mostly I use the finer end. Or I've got this one, which is a Faber Castell one. This is primarily, I think, designed for rubbing out coloured pencil, but they're they're readily available, and there's other brands as well. Let me just not focus. No, okay, I'll put. So, as I say, anything similar, uh, kind of pencil eraser. So, all I need to do is just go around the edge of the paper with the rubber. And that will just remove that excess foil. So I'm not even coming onto the top, I'm just literally going around the edge. And this is where you might want to see whether or not you know less pressure would work because then you're less likely to get the overfoiling but you do need enough pressure to cut through the card and paper Do it very gently. You can always go over an area again if you've been too gentle. If you find you've um, taken the surface of your paper off, you can't put it back. Just very gently. Now worked great around the edge and I could carry on and get the rest of the bits off the top but the foiling I want has been pressed in to the paper so if I use this and I use it very flatly I can just go over the top there and that will take the foil that's on the top edge rather than right in the on, on the side edge So I've got a nice, clean, crisp, bald line around the edge. Okay, so let's do the, the layer that goes on to. On this, if I, if I want to stick this down and raise it up on some foam pads, if I stick the two together now, that makes that strong enough to be able to do that. 
otherwise just being paper is likely to sag so uh, that's how how I'd use that yeah it doesn't go to waste I do use them stick the two together so back to my black card which I put over here okay so I've got my foil put my card piece I want. That's probably big enough to do a sentiment sentiment from for another project, so don't throw that away. And that's the other thing with cutting the middle out. It, it does mean you the foil stays kind of pristine and available to, for use on another project. So put that down. Reuse my tape. Okay, that's ready to go. That goes on the go press and foil, die side down, the card over the top. And that needs to warm up for probably about 30 seconds before I roll it through the go press. So I'll just get the die cutting machine out and then we'll have a look at how that turns out. Okay, so the, the go press is ready now, there we are. Let me just turn the camera slightly. There we are, so that's sitting over there on its base. I'm just going to pull that off. And then I can roll it through. And again, I feel a little bit of resistance as the roller gets the die, just like I would when I, if I was die cutting. See how that's turned out. So I'm going to slide that off. Because remember, this is hot. Slide that off there. I always put that back on the base to warm up. Okay. So I can turn this over, and if I just press in the middle, hopefully it's cut through, and it will fall out. I think it's not quite cut. Oh, just one spot. So I'm just going to roll that through the die cutting machine again, so bear with me. Okay, so I've just popped it back into the go press. It doesn't really need to reheat because it probably has foiled. But I've just popped it on at a slight angle. there and it just falls out there we are so again it's a little bit of over, over foiling on the very edges and then you can go there we are the camera can be that up at that angle so again i should use my sand eraser my rubber to um just take clean up those edges so so i can use this one i don't know you can see what i'm doing there let me just bring the camera down a bit. Maybe a bit over there. That's, that's, not, that's quite a good angle. So I can just go around there. I 
this is a solid core black card so I'm not worried about revealing any any white areas on this but if you did then something like an alcohol marker should cover them back up for you okay or I can use this one so I'm just going around the edge Give it a brush off. Okay, if I bring that back up to the camera, see I've now got a nice clean edge. Okay, so, so now I need this. And I, I am actually going to stick these together, so. some glue on here quite like doing this with wet glue so I've got some sliding time I like to make sure my glues spread quite evenly so I'm just going to use a glue paddle to smooth that out Now, obviously, I've used cream card here. If you wanted to make sure you weren't going to have a light edge showing, you could use some more black card, or you could use whatever kind of scrap card you've got and then go around the edges with a marker pen um, or some black ink and just disguise the edges that way before you glue it together, though. go together really nicely to make the panel okay so that's how how that's done really let me just get the card back so I've done center panel in that same size okay and then I've done the mats for the small ones are that size and then I've done the next size down for the actual pattern paper I say one 12 by 12 sheet is all that took to make um, and approximately an A4 sheet of black card because I've got the black matte layer underneath here and then the other half a sheet for the, the three other mats to go on the card. Okay, thank you for watching.